Hey there everyone, I just got this. This is the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet Chromebook. Let me just stop talking about it and get this thing open and show you what's in there. Basically a tablet um, with a 10.1 inch full HD screen. Yeah, let's just get that off and nice blue gray back there. Camera, there's your pogo pins for attaching the keyboard. No audio jack, um, so Bluetooth uh, or USB-C. Anyway, let's see what else is in the box here. Lift that up. All right, so guessing this is the keyboard. And keyboard, all right. Pogo pins on the bottom there, pogo pins there, and then we just, oh, look at that. And this, this appears to be the back cover. That. Oh, and that just snaps right into place too. Uh, so here you go. This has a built-in bendy part kickstand. So there you go. There's that. Ta-da! Um, you got your full keyboard and uh, touchpad. Nice clicky pad. And uh, let's finish off what's in the box and see what's in there. Uh, it does not have an audio jack. Uh, Lenovo includes a USB-C to uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack there um, and then you've got a USB-C cable for charging and uh, let's see what's in the and a USB-C well USB charger um, and there you go that's it the only other thing in there is a quick start guide um, so there you go that's what's in the box anyway now that we've talked about what this is and what's in the box let's talk about what it can do So, if you're familiar with small tablety 2-in-1s, you might think this is essentially a Chrome version of the first Microsoft Surface Go, and you're not wrong. Uh, again, this is built around a 10.1 inch display with a 16-10 aspect ratio, so you have a bit more height for work. Uh, it's a nice display with a 400 nit brightness, which helps with the reflections off the screen a little bit. Snap on its keyboard and you're ready to work. The keyboard is not bad, but Lenovo cut down the size on the keys on the right side here. And of particular frustration for me is the apostrophe key, which I simply could not seem to hit and instead hit the enter key more often than not. With regular use, I might be able to overcome it, but who knows. Also, the keyboard's not backlit, which is not uncommon for cheaper Chromebooks, but still kind of a bummer. The small click pad is good, however, if you tend to drag your palms like I do while typing, uh, you can likely look forward to some cursor jumpiness and uh, accidental text selection. It's just one more thing you'll have to adjust to. And because I'm sure someone out there cares, you can in fact use this on your lap. It's a bit of a balancing act, but the keyboard connection is strong and the kickstand supports it in enough positions to give you some flexibility. If you're working at home or the office, I'd take advantage of the USB-C port and get a dock to connect an external display, keyboard, and mouse. Using it side by side with the display as an extended desktop gives you a small screen to use as a communications device if you want to keep Slack or email or messages open or something else open. Or you can use the Duet as a media player while you're working on the larger main display. Basically, while you're on the go, you have the small device to work on, but when you need extra space for long sessions, you have the option to connect to a display mouse and keyboard. Inside is a MediaTek 8-core processor, 4 gigs of memory, and either 64 or 128 gigs of storage. With no card slot for expansion and only $20 separating the two, you should probably go with the 128 gig version if you can. I was a little concerned about having only 4 gigs of memory in this thing. I used the COG System Viewer app to keep an eye on memory and the Duet seemed to be using most of its memory most of the time, but performance only occasionally got laggy for a few seconds here and there, both on its own and when connected to an external display. But you know, otherwise it was fine. 
gaming was fine on it too. Uh, since you have access to the Google Play Store, I stuck to Android games for testing, but the Duet can be paired with Google's Stadia controller and service. Between the removable keyboard and kickstand, the Duet is easy to set up for gaming with a Bluetooth controller, and it's small and light enough to play handheld as well. Battery life seems to be in the ballpark of what Lenovo is promising, which is up to 10 hours. I haven't done any formal testing yet, but based on my usage, I could see it easily getting up to 8 hours. But that's all going to depend on your screen brightness and whatever it is you're doing. Moving on. Along with the USB-C port on the right, you've got the volume rocker and power button, and then moving to the top, you've got the far-field mics and stereo speakers. Combined with the 2 megapixel front-facing camera, they worked well for video chats, though my wife said I sounded a little bit tinny on her end. The mics can also be used for Google Assistant for doing important things like setting reminders and playing cat videos on YouTube. The speakers are not great, they're okay for casual use, but uh, anything more than that and you'll want Bluetooth headphones or speakers. With the keyboard detached, you've got yourself a nice little tablet that weighs about 1.5 pounds or 670 grams with the back cover on. Google recently updated Chrome, the OS and browser with a tablet mode and unique gestures. A long swipe up brings you to your home screen, a short swipe up brings up your pinned apps, swipe up and hold and you'll see all your open apps and you can then drag one to uh, split screen mode by dragging an app to the top or bottom and then another to the opposite side. A bar in the middle lets you resize each side. You can also go back to the last screen by swiping in from the left and page back and forth in the browser by swiping left and right. Between these updates and the Play Store access, this feels more like a mid-range Android tablet than other Chrome 2-in-1s I've tested. So that's a look at the Duet's features and some of what it can do. Now Google updates Chrome OS every six weeks and for this it'll continue to do that for the next eight years. So the features you have today won't be the features you'll have tomorrow. After spending a little bit of time with it, I'd have to say as a main device, this is probably not gonna get you very far. Uh, but as a secondary device, something to supplement another computer just so that you have something to answer emails or surf the web and play some games Games, this is a great little device for that uh, or if you need something that's super mobile that you can connect uh, really fast to a you know your mobile hotspot or whatever or for tethering instantly this is a great option for that it's essentially a more accessible more affordable version of the Google Pixel Slate um, especially since it only carries a price tag of $300